All right, guys, we made it again. Episode 38 of the Homestead Shop Talk podcast with Al from Lemon Acres, Ben from Holler Homestead, and myself, Jason from Sow the Land. And in case you're new here, you're you're just listening. Um, you know, it's just three guys here, and we figure we get together and talk shop, talk homestead shop, homestead life. You know, because we all individually have our own YouTube channels, and we figure we'd get together and maybe I don't know, talk about different ideas. Um, just just a reason to get together, I guess. And. Um, so I appreciate everyone listening. So is anyone used to the time change yet or, or what? No. I know. Today went by so fast. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I had barely enough time to, I went to go dig a hole and I was like, oh, podcast time. <laughs> <laughs> How long does this one mess with you guys for? Eh, a week or two. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, it's like a week or two. It's really the other, the other time change, fall back. That's the one that messes with me. I, I don't know. I think it's about the same. It's easier going this way because the days are getting longer. And like Equinox is in, what, two weeks? A week? Something like that. So, a week. I mean, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Yeah, for sure. I think fall back is definitely hurts more. Really? Um, <laughs> this one messes with me the most. Really? Yep. Well, I mean, it might I be because know. I get up at 3.30. So the spawn and I was really getting up at 2.30 and it, it, it hurt. Oh, man. Yeah. I can't get up that early. <laughs> <laughs> and we were away for the weekend at a tractor show you know so it's like oh uh, it really came early this morning so how did that tractor show go al was there a lot of people there there was i think there was like three thousand people who ended up coming out over the two and a half days it was That's going on yep don't know how many people we talked to but it was quite a few it's always nice talking to people in real life instead of just in comments yeah it's kind of cool that's great sure. getting to like, see all the new toys that i'm like yeah we could use one of those on the homestead add that to the wish list yep so pretty much every like tractor company's there nope so this is so the there's a dealer in uh maine that sells tym tractors and they have the territory for all of maine and all of new hampshire to sell tyms and nobody else can so they put on a tractor show at the augusta civic center in augusta maine oh, okay and then they have the TYM tractors, a bunch of different attachments. And then they t picked up a line called XCMG. They make uh, like mini excavators, big excavators, a bunch of equipment, skid steers, rollers, front end loaders. They're the, the third largest in the world, but they're not known here yet. I guess they used to make Caterpillars equipment to like 06 or 09. So they just became a dealer for them last summer. So they had a lot of their stuff there. One of the things I found pretty interesting, we we're talking to the owner and they're made in, you know, overseas, China, Korea, different places. He said, they're a lot cheaper than cat. He has to, or he doesn't have to pay, but what he pays for it here, 25% of that goes to the government as a tariff and Caterpillar equipment is made overseas, but it's not assembled. It comes in here. Like it's, it's in pieces. So it's like, you got like, say like on an excavator, you'd have like the track system, the undercarriage, the body, and then the boom are in separate containers. They put them together. So since they're assembled in the U S they don't have to pay the tariff, even though they're made somewhere else. So it's just kind of funny here in the different loopholes. I know I was looking at tractors today. I was you like, were. I think I, uh, what was I doing? I was, I was bringing out my wood chipper. I have a little wood chipper that, but I needed it. I don't like this wood chipper. I mean, it works, <laughs> but for what it does, it, I feel like it takes a lot of time just mm -hmm. to get a little bit of wood chips. Yep. Um, it works, but for what I need it for, like I need it, I need more wood chips. Um, so I, I, I was dragging this thing out and I was like, I probably used it. It was brand new. Like I bought it two years ago and I probably used it maybe five times. I dragging this thing out. I was like, <laughs> man i don't want to be i had to drag it up this hill and i was like i'm done I'm like I, I don't want to drag this thing up this hill anymore you know <laughs> i was like that's it lorraine i'm getting that's it i'm gonna go look for tractor <laughs> <laughs> i i think i probably say that multiple times throughout the year yep but for the last at least the last two years um i don't know and then i calmed down and i'm like okay just just I'm, I need to calm down for a minute. And... <laughs> and I was doing the same thing. It's a it's a slippery slope, and then all of a sudden you wind up at the dealer, and 
I know. It's over. I look at them online, but I have yet to actually go to a dealer and and, and look at them because I know what's going to happen. If I go That's there, trouble. yeah, it's like shopping for a car. It's like, I'm not looking for a car, but I'm going to go to the dealer. <laughs> next thing you know, you got a brand new car. <laughs> yep. I it's keep like looking to... at looking for different wood chippers. It'd be nice to get one that would actually do six inch brush and bigger, but mm. they're pretty expensive, even used. Yeah. I think I might rent one. Yep. Which I you think guys... the local local guy around here, the rental place, I think he told me I called him up like two weeks ago. He told me like nine inches. It does yeah. do. That's okay, what so I've that's heard. a nice that's, that's a good a nice size one. wood chipper. The ones that we can rent to six inches, and they don't, they're not that great. They're mm. better than the smaller ones. I've thought about getting the wood chipper for my uh, tractor. You know, it's PTO driven. Um, there's a couple different ones. I think the Woodland Mills, I almost bought that one at an auction, but it ended up going for new price at this auction. It was like, if I'm going to pay new price, I'm going to buy a new one. But that one, I think it's a six inch. And watching all sorts of videos on that thing, it's like, man, that might be able to do what I need it to do. Because, you know, I've, I've got my wood chipper and I can fit four inches in there. Yeah. They say you can fit four inches in there. If you put four inches in there, you're going to sit there and ever so <laughs> slowly feed that thing in there. It'll turn it into wood chips, but it's you're going to be there for 10 minutes. But, right. yeah, I've thought about getting one of those PTO wood chippers that being able to drive to where you need to be and you just plop down and point the shoot and go. It'd be nice to be able to take like a six inch tree and just feed it in and you'd be really be able to get some good wood chips for bedding. <laughs> Cause that's the hard part when you chip and brush, it's like you trip this, you chip this huge pile. And it's like, you look at your pile, it's like this big. It's like, wait a minute, I just spent a half hour chipping and that's all I got. I think it's like a 10 to one ratio. You have this <laughs> massive brush pile and it'll, you can pick it up with the front loader on the tractor and you know, three, four scoops. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Sure is handy though. It is. Is the weather getting warmer down there? We actually had a frost last night, like this morning. Wow. Last last night I was out, you know, because all the all the trees are in bloom. I ran out last oh. night and put plastic over a whole bunch of our like peach trees, nectarine trees, plum trees, all those, and it looked like we had a whole bunch of like little mushrooms out in the yard. Uh, <laughs> That's what we did. Yeah, I know. I, we're we're actually planted uh, some uh, what are they nectarines? No, I forget what the rain planted. Apricots. There we go. And then I noticed the blooms on the on our peach. We had some peach trees that we planted last year. I was like, what? This is crazy. And then like, it was about to get dark, and Lorraine runs out with trash bags. <laughs> She's like, we should put these on here. I was like, yeah, you're probably right. So, our trees look like body bags last night. <laughs> <laughs> What Not mushrooms or like rain's like we're getting peach trees this, peaches this year you know i think uh, what did i do i think i've got six six trees out there that were in full bloom eight trees uh three or three or nectarine three or peaches and it looks like one of the peach trees got totally roasted and one of the nectarines was a total loss on the blooms but i don't know like but all of them are covered with plastic the same way. The one, you know, right here looks fine and 10 feet, 20 feet this way, this one's roasted. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the difference was. It's kind of weird. Yeah. So we'll see. Every single year, I've just left it up to nature. It's like if these trees bloom and we get a late frost, like so be it. Uh, last year, we actually got like one nectarine off of one tree. All the rest of them got complete frost bit uh this year i'm actually like trying supposedly if you go out there with a pump sprayer before the sun's up and you spray everything down and get some ice to build on those flowers uh before the sun hits them it'll save them so i don't know i i went out there this morning and i took my pump sprayer and i sprayed a couple of them because there's like a plum tree that didn't get covered and i mean it looks like it kind of worked but I don't know. We'll see. I, I'm suspicious. I, I think the ones that we covered, I think that's the way to go. You getting another frost tonight? <clears throat> yep. Yep. Supposed to be yep. down 30 again. That's okay. what Lorraine's doing right now. She's she's covering them, those body bags on those trees. <laughs> Your neighbor's going to be calling the cops on you. <laughs> he was looking at, my neighbor was looking at me doing that yesterday. 
I saw him today. He's like, oh, I saw you putting those bags on those trees. He's like, you guys are, are ahead of the game. I was like, well, I'm trying. Must have caught some kids shooting squirrels again in their backyard, and they're making a day. <laughs> I know. I know. It's not Halloween yet. <laughs> so how's the house coming along, Ben? Oh, so we've kind of, I guess, just feels like we pumped the brakes on it. We uh, we got rained out. The, mm, yes, it rained a ton. Rained a ton. So oh, we lost we a couple got, days. We got really wet. Yeah, we lost a couple days last week. Um, I uh, I'm one of those. I like to just like put my head down and go, and having to just pump the brakes. Like today, yeah. today I worked on garden stuff uh, in the greenhouse because where I'm trying to dig a footer is like there's literally feet of water in just the the start of the trench that we got. So I've got to let this dry out a little bit more before I can get in there and put in all my footers. And it's just, it's a hassle. So I've, I've been extremely discouraged and frustrated with this project. Um, you know, having to change stuff and yeah. So I, I've, I've had a hard time maintaining my spirits with this project because it's just like, hurry up and wait and start and stop again. So yeah, I, I don't know. At this point, if we uh, if we get it done this year, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be surprised. That's how I feel, anyways. Anytime we dig a trench or a hole, it rains, and we're dealing with muck, and you gotta wait. It's yeah, like you said, it's very discouraging. It just beats you up for sure. We'll get it though. It's just a matter of time. We'll get it, and once we get the concrete in, then it's go time, and then we're you know we're catching back up. Um, now I will say like there's some questions I have, uh, that I'm going to ask our, uh, building inspector when he comes out next, uh, cause you know, you got to get the footings inspected before you pour. Well, we kind of have an idea. There's kind of another direction we've thought about going since we're already changing this, we might change something else. And, uh, let's just say, you know, we might have some, some, uh, cellar space. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna ask some questions, and I may end up tearing out everything I've put in already and just completely change the whole project. But I'll I'll talk to the guy who uh, I I guess I'm having to jump for, see what he says about it. He's a pretty cool guy. Our our uh, building inspectors. He's pretty cool. He's about my age. Just good old country boy. That's he was, uh, yeah. when he came over, he was, he's just like easy going. So it's like, okay, cool. I can talk to this guy. I was expecting yeah. like a California building inspector where they <laughs> come over goose stepping, ready to write you on everything. Yeah. Yeah. They're kind of like, ah, do this, do that. All right. So it looks good. <laughs> yeah. He was like, you know, hey, make sure you call me back before you pour concrete. Other than that, like just get everything framed up, framed up before you call me again, like, it's all good. I can, you know, just don't put up any drywall or anything like that before you call me. And it was like, wow, that's pretty far down the road. So, yeah, but you know, cool. Dealing with the rain can't work on any of it in the rain. So <laughs> hurry up and wait. <laughs> yeah. It'll get done, man. It'll get done. So you got to pour the forms before you can pour your concrete wall and you gotta get the forms, the footings expect the footings inspected before you pour your, your walls. So you start block your wall. So, uh, basically we just have to put in a footer. Um, I think it code here is 16 by six is the size of the footer. We're going to go yep. a little bit bigger than that. Um, and all it is, is just, it's a, you can dig a trench. If your dirt doesn't cave in and you can dig nice trenches, you don't even have to have forms. Now we're going to have to have some forms because it's going to step down. Uh, yep. but you know, like I wanted to know, it's like, do we need a stem wall or anything like that? And no, we don't. You just make it level, make it flat. Any place you do a step down, you know, do that right. And then you obviously put your rebar in and then you just stack your block from there. So, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy, but it's just a matter of dealing with the mud. <clears throat> so before you stack your block, do you got to get him out there again? Nope. No, uh, after he inspects the forms or, you know, the, the footer before we pour concrete, you know, he'll give the okay and then we can pour all the concrete and start building our walls. So gotcha. it's, it's mainly, 
out here, you know, like just a couple years ago, they didn't care. Um, I was talking to a friend who, uh, he's a government employee, if you will. And he was telling me that out here, code enforcement only works off of complaints. They said, because there is so much that goes on in this county that is, you know, kind of sketchy that if they just drove around and looked for stuff, they would have more work than they could even get to. And so they just work off of complaints and stuff like that because that that keeps them more than busy. You know, obviously the, you know, people building stuff that keeps them busy, but mainly it's just complaints. They don't they don't go looking looking for trouble because I, I know in this neighborhood they would find it. <laughs> what do you got going on now this week? Oh, we've been working on getting our chicken coop up and ready so we can get the chickens brought in. I'm hemming and hiring about bringing the chickens in. We got the coop done. And That's now too I'm nice. Like, I know. I'm like, we're getting <laughs> to be at that stage. If I bring them in, they're going to be brought in for maybe a couple, of, you know, two weeks to four weeks the most. And then we got the meat bird. Oh, not the, yeah, the meat birds will come in May. So we'll need it as a, add as a brooder for May. But before that, the egg lay is going to be going out back on pasture. So, so this know. is like a winter coop? Yeah, this will be the winter coop and then the brooder for the chicks. So it's kind yeah. of like, do we waste our time bringing the chicks in? I guess it depends on, I guess we kind of had a false spring going on. I guess we shouldn't say we had it, it warmed up. We melted all of our snow. And then yesterday it got down in the thirties, rain and snow. Last night, I think it got down to like 29. So I was supposed to get down to 23. Then it's supposed to be back in the forties and fifties the rest of the week. We're having mud season. My road <laughs> washed out. Yeah. <clears throat> so yep. the brook went over one of the roads and washed it all out. So I had to get gravel brought in and so having some sinkholes, but that's a pain. That time of year. Yeah. And then nobody wants to haul you know, we got a one ton dump truck to bring us in just enough rock to fill in what we needed to for the washout. But I'm like, don't want to bring in a big dump truck that's just going to run everything up and make more of a mess. It's just that time of the year. It seems like everybody in the area is dealing with it. So, how's your dog doing? He's doing good. Yeah, we were. Su- I was surprised with how quick he is learning. Like sit, stay, come. I was presently surprised. We brought him to the vet today. Brutus. Brutus, to right. vet. Brutus. Yep. Brought him to the vet today. He rides okay in the the truck. He, it's not his favorite thing, which is not the that big of a deal um but we get to the vet and he just goes in sits down lies down and just lies on the floor the whole time he didn't they gave him shots and he was like whatever <laughs> they gave him snacks he ate the snacks I'm like all right the kind of dog we want so i was recording a video the other day we use external mics and i didn't even think of it when my camera fell off the tractor so we were shooting i shot the rest of that video and then we were at the tractor show i was making some video clips i uploaded an instagram story tina's like your instagram story has no volume oh, so i was no. like oh sorry took the mic out listened nope no volume so the mic has a like a two-piece you got the mic you plug in but then the plug in like slides in well it wasn't even like pushed out like in like a 30 second of an inch but i just like tapped on it. i went just a whisker so i was like oh i have <laughs> Like a two half days worth of video footage without oh, audio that I gotta do voiceovers no. or I was like, oh. that's yeah, that's the worst. Yeah. We are currently dealing with the audio problems. We've got three cameras that we use. One of them fell down, landed right on the microphone jack, and busted mm-hmm. the microphone jack up inside the camera. So that camera's out. I mean, you can use it for time lapses and stuff like that, but that one we actually are going to send in to get it fixed. Well, I don't know. This was back when I was doing the cow. Uh, I had the thing on a tripod, and somehow the tripod got knocked over. And this is our big camera. Big camera fell down, landed on the mic jack. Same way. Now Mm -hmm. it's busted. You can kind of, like, wiggle the thing and get it to work, but there has been... I mean, it's every other video will Meg will get in there and start editing. And she'll be like, yeah, there's, you know, no sound on this or it's yeah. crackly or something like that. It's just, it's a nightmare. And, you know, you can't go back and reshoot that stuff. Like nope. once it's done, it's done. 
It's such yeah. a hassle. It is. Yeah, all they're getting is music. <laughs> yep. Now it's B-roll. Yep. Yeah. B-roll and music. It's so hard. Yeah. Especially you have like some good talking points and it's like, like we're at the tractor show, I was walking in, I always get a hard time for all the toys and stuff I like. So I'm like walking in, looking around all the stuff, like giving a hard time to everybody about all the new toys I'm going to go find and stuff. And I'm like, I had no audio for that. I'm like, I can't redo that. Like it was like in the moment, just having fun goofing around. Oh, you know, you, you can't make that all back up again. I'm like, oh, I know. But just do it like a voice, like pretend it's actually you talking. <laughs> right. Just try to say it, just to remember, try to remember what you said exactly. Read my lips. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what's the worst though. This happened to me uh, when we first moved to this property. You know, I was like, okay, in my mind, I'm like, okay, what videos I want to do? You're like, you know, I'm trying to prepare for like, I'm talking like five years in advance, like, mm -hmm. like, you know, like a before and after type video, you know, kind of a time lapse type video. I'm like, okay, I want, I'm going to go around. I filmed every single thing around the property before I did anything, you know, before we moved in, yep. you know, cause this is like a before, right? Like before I do anything. And so I did all that we went through the whole entire first year of living here and my whole hard drive that I had every single thing on this hard drive d got crashed, deleted. Oh, that makes me sick. That sucks. Everything. And I'm like, I tried my hardest to get it back. Like I took it to a shop. Like I had drove like over an hour away to take it to this computer shop. I'm like, can you rescue this? And they, they only rescued like maybe a couple folders, which was nothing compared to what I had. I'm talking, this was a two terabyte um, oh, hard drive. Everything was gone. Like everything. I mean, you know, I, a lot of it, I already edited the videos and I posted them. Right. But as far as like the, the raw footage, all gone. I was like, yep. I was devastated. I was yep. like, I was so mad. We've had that happen once. And it's like I said, it's just like a, punch in the gut it's like oh I i'll never get that back all the work i know yeah like all of it, it's almost like it didn't even exist <laughs> <laughs> i mean there is the one good thing at least you know there is some of it up on youtube that'll never go yeah. away hopefully but right man that sucks i know but it's like whenever i wanted to do you know my last video that i do of like an update uh you know i combine everything and I was planning on this big old video to do and it was just like, I was like, dang it. Now I'm having to just rely on the stuff that I already had edited yeah. to use. Um, but I had so much more other things that I had in mind, but yeah, I don't like talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. So how'd your week go this week, Jason? Uh, so I don't know what it is, but I think it's like that, tr this transition of winter to spring, like I call it like, um, I don't know what I call it, but it's, it's almost like the people, like the neighbors that are starting to come alive all of a sudden, because, you know, my, my, my Nate, one of my neighbors decides to build a, uh, a dirt track race track on his property. And he's like going around and around and around on this dirt track. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like, so there's that. Right. And then like, I told you guys last week, we had those three kids on my property hunting for squirrels. <laughs> and then this week I had two stray dogs come in and one of them gets caught in my chicken netting. And I'm like, man, I don't want to shoot a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to shoot a dog. Um, like I had just finished doing chores or I fed everybody. And then I came inside made some coffee. I happened to look up and luckily, I mean, I can pretty much see a lot of like pretty much my whole property from my kitchen window, which is nice. Yeah. And I'm always looking out that thing. I'm always looking out the window. I'm like, just kind of looking around and I look up and I was like, these, I saw one big dog walking around. I was like, dang it. I ran out there. And by the time I got it, there was a second dog that was a smaller dog that was wrapped up in the netting. And I was like, come on. And they weren't, they didn't bark one time at me. They were s super friendly. Um, and I was able to um, release the smaller dog that was tangled. Uh, he didn't break my fence. Thank goodness. I didn't have to cut him out. Um, and as soon as I did that, they, they took off in the woods and 
I don't know. I had never seen these dogs before. You know, I kind of know, you know, you drive by your neighbors. You, I know what dogs they have because they've been on my property before. <laughs> but these dogs have not. Did they yeah, have I don't know where they came from. They had a collar. I, I, I didn't see. It was a collar, but I didn't know if they had, like, tags or anything. Right. Um, but I was like, man, see, this is why I'm putting up my fence. But I don't know what it is. I think it's just the, you know, the insects are coming alive. The frogs are happening. And the people are getting out of their homes and <laughs> being more active or something. I don't know. I don't know what people do. I don't know where these dogs came from. but they get any they chickens didn't... or anything? No, they didn't, they didn't eat any chickens. He was, Good. It, to me, it was, he knocked over my, one of the, my five gallon buckets of food. I think he was trying to open that up and yep. he was smelling it probably. Um, so there's that. And then, um, uh, my friend Mike came over, um, and helped me with fencing for a few hours, uh, which was pretty cool. So I would say we're a little bit, I'm a little bit more than halfway done with the fence and the portion that I want to do. Right. It's, it's getting there. Um, I can't, I can't, I'm, I'm pretty much done with it in my brain, but. <laughs> do you have all the posts done, but you still have more posts you need to do? Uh, there's maybe like one or two I need to do, but I need to do the, the cross, the H braces on them. Yep still i know definitely one side of the property is that's pretty much ready to go that pretty much i think i could i could put the the high tensile up and charge it if i wanted to nice. um but i'm kind of just kind of going along around the rest of it um and then just having my friend mike there he's he's done it before so you know he's kind of my go-to whenever i have a fencing question so having him here we we're kind of talking through things like just kind of more detailed stuff of like well how do you you know tie it to the corner and you know you know which tensioner or insulator to use and stuff like that and it's like so it's so involved fencing is it's like you see a fence and you're like that looks simple enough but then when you really look at it and then the detail of it it's not that simple um, and all these like little tools and like tricks that you learn, you don't know that stuff. Like no one's going to tell you this stuff. It's just, you kind of have to figure it out on your own. Um, and that's, what's, it's kind of hard about it, but, but it'll get done. You got any more phone calls to pick up critters yet? Any cows on the way or, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, not phone calls. Um, where I pick up my feed, they have some sheep that I might be getting from them, but, uh, I haven't got a random phone call lately. Lately. They probably see me doing all these fencing videos and they're like, I'm not going to call him right now. <laughs> he's not ready yet. <laughs> yeah. Wait until he's done. Yeah. Wait. He's probably going to tell me no, 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 none of that. But, uh, yeah, just doing the fencing. What else? Oh, we did, um, our two breeding Cooney Coonies. We separated them because Elvira, the female, she's according to our calculations, she should be having babies, piglets, in uh, at the end of this month, at the end of March, or like maybe in like two weeks. Nice. So we split them up, and it's still kind of hard to tell. Like I, she looks bigger, but I don't know. We're kind of waiting right now. And then Zeke, he's by himself, and then we're gonna probably move one of the male piglets over to him. See what happens. Maybe we'll have piglets in a couple weeks. How many piglets did she have the first time? She had eight. Uh, one of them died. Uh, she, I think she smashed it. So she had seven, and then we sold four of them. No, we sold three of them. Kept four. We'll probably do the same. Probably sell some and then keep some. Man, yeah, tis the season. About it. Yeah, I I completely missed the window for putting the boar back with the ladies. Uh, I was mm -hmm. gonna do it in like, I don't know, December or something like that. We were processing pigs and cows and everything. I it's I spaced it. And finally, you know, mid February, it was like, oh hey, I guess we're not having spring piglets after all. So <laughs> I know one of them is very obviously pregnant now. She's uh, she's about a month pregnant now, and like you can tell, her belly is so much bigger than uh, the other female. Um, the other female, so they're kind of funny. Like they cycle at the same time, and so like the last two times we've had pigs, they've been within. I don't know, a week of each other. The last time they had babies, it was within a day of each other, like 24 hours. Well, this wow. time 
I had left a runt with one of the moms to see if I could get a little more weight on it before I weaned it. You know, no competition uh, from the other the other piglets. And because of that, one of them started, you know, cycling again. And the one who was nursing didn't. And so now, now they're now they're out of out of whack with each other. So yeah, now now we're gonna have piglets at least, you know, like I don't know, half a month apart, a month apart, something like that. It's kind of like, man, everything was like going smooth. And I just kind of like uh, <laughs> fell off the wagon or something. And now now everything's going to be all screwed up. Yeah, it's hard to plan that stuff. You know, you got to remember things. And it's like, it's just to get to that point, too, because these pigs take forever to grow and to get to that point where we're constantly producing them and then we're putting them in the freezer, you know, and hopefully you don't have to, hopefully, the, hopefully it works out with them, with these coonies. You know, what age um, did you stop breeding them? How how old did you let them get first? They were, well, when I bought them, she, the guy said that they were already bred and they were a year old. They were not, so it took another year for them to breed. So they're three years old now, the breeding pair. What about you, Ben? How old were yours? Were they older when you got yours, or were yours younger? Our uh, our females were about two when we got Mo. Mo was three months old when we got him. And, uh, you know, we hired him to do a job and he did that job immediately. Like, I mean, mark it on the calendar. It was <laughs> three months, three weeks, three days from the day we got him to when we had piglets. So oh, it was wow. like, right on, Mo. We got him so we could How have Mo he? pigs and he was three months old. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So I think what was funny was that he was pretty small when we got him. Like he was, he wasn't even a hundred pounds. He was probably... <laughs> 50 pounds when we got him and our females they're you know 150 to 200 pounds and uh he he got in there and just started well for at the risk of being too graphic he was too short like he was absolutely too short to get the job done but he kept <laughs> yeah he was like trying to jump up but he couldn't reach and finally these uh these ladies they just laid down for him like it was the funniest thing. It was like, and he just kept at it, like just bugging them. And they finally just, they just lay down and it does his thing. And yeah, it was just, pigs are funny. <laughs> All right, little man. <laughs> but now, you know, That's he's funny. He's massive. He dwarfs them now. He's mm. so much bigger than them now. Uh, he, wow. he really has put on some, some weight. He's a, he's a big boy now, but yeah. Anybody wondering? Yeah, they can absolutely uh, get the job done at three months old. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if, yeah, I've always heard coonies are hard to breed. I saw a video recently with, um, I think it's one of their newer videos, the Homesteading Family YouTube. They have uh, coonies. They said they were having a hard time breeding them. So I think it might just be just the breed. So I don't know if it was the male or female that weren't doing it when we got them. But, I mean, if she has them again, it doesn't seem like they're having a problem now. It's just that initial first first one it's like our mangalitsas we could not get them to breed to save our lives that was that was such a long drawn out process before we finally decided to put them in the freezer gonna be getting a, hopefully getting a breeding pair breeding pair this spring of the ipp so i'm like okay i wonder how long we'll have to wait before we'll actually see any piglets from them time yeah well. i think it just depends i don't know yep going to look at some new farm animals this weekend no in two days i'm gonna look at them and see maybe it's something we want to bring to the homestead or not but it's supposed to be a nice day out so i'm gonna go for a ride and check out some critters bison no that'd be nice but no <laughs> i i ain't got the fence and i don't want to build the fence for that <laughs> it's probably like a horse fence you gotta build all right yeah i would it's i don't know be a stout fence for bison <laughs> yeah I bet you that I bet you the states have different requirements for that, but maybe not. I don't, I don't know because like I know exotic the, game and stuff they do. I, we have a bison farm twenty minutes from here, and driving by, like you can see it from the freeway. Uh, I've never really noticed that their fence looks anything different from any of the other fences with people who have cattle. So yeah, I don't know. That's true. I've seen that place before too, and it looks like just a regular forty-eight inch woven wire fence oh really <laughs> i don't know i haven't seen them 
run out in the highway anytime, you know. Yep. <laughs> Bison on the loose. Bison on the loose. We got an AI tech coming in April to breed azalea. We're going to be getting Reverence Farms. We're getting uh, some semen from Reverence Farm down in Virginia. They're a grass-based dairy that's been doing it for quite a while. So we're going to try to get some of their genetics up here. So she should be a little bit better on grass forage, or her baby should be better on grass forage. No, AI is not guaranteed. No, nope, right? it's not. And then we're going to go with sex semen. So sex semen is even less of a guarantee. I figured What is that? that? So you'll know what you get? Yes, we're going to go with, we'll get sex semen, so we'll get female, a female. So we're like, we're going to do it. We might as well, I think it's like, I think the semen's probably like 70 or 75 bucks more than an unsexed. I'm like, if we're going to do it, we might as well spend the extra money. And they're like, well, it's even less of a guarantee. I'm like, well, I don't want to, I mean, if I'm going to get a boy, I'm going to get a boy, but if I'm going to be paying somebody to AI and do all the stuff, I'd rather have a female, especially if yep. you're going to try to get some good genetics up here. May your luck be better than ours. We, uh, <laughs> we're we oh for three. Are you? Did you do any of the hormones out of curiosity? Yes. Yeah, you we did. did. Yep. Okay. Um, so, you know, I think it was just our vet. We only have one large animal vet uh, in our area. And yep. she mainly works on horses. Um, and so she, I mean, she told us, she's like, I don't usually do cows. I usually do horses. But, you know, since I'm the only vet in the area that, you know, is able to do it, I'll do it. Well, I think every single time, yeah, all three times we tried it, we did the hormones and I mean, I just, it, knowing my cow, by the time we got to year two with the cow, I know when she's coming into heat, I know all the signs and, you know, how she yep. acts, her mood, you know, it's, yep. man, it's like being married to another, another woman. <laughs> uh, you just, the amount I paid attention to this animal was incredible like i've never cared so much about an animal well we the way it lined up with the last time we ai'd her uh it like stacked out perfect to where you know when we gave her the hormones she was already getting ready to come into heat and so like the progression you know uh i think it's you give her a shot and then Five days later, you give her another shot, and then the vet comes eight hour, or 12 hours from then and does the AI. Yep. Well, the way it's supposed to work out is like you do that first shot. It basically stalls her cycle and starts it again. And then, you know, in that five-day span, you give her that next one, and she should be in standing heat within 12 hours. Right. She absolutely was. Like, she stood for the vet. She has never stood for the vet. She usually fights. Uh, that time, like she stood for the vet, it was like, Hey, maybe this is going to work this time. And we thought it took and it didn't. So it was just like, okay, we'll just find somebody with a bowl. But that was before we had decided to get out of cows for a minute. So yep. yeah, may, may, may the odds be forever in your favor. <laughs> Thank you. I was just, so she's in heat right now. So I was just going through my calendar right now. And I'm like, before I was telling you guys, and I'm like, it's going to be within, we're going to be doing the hormones, but we're, it's also going to be pretty close to her cycle. So hopefully that's how, when we got her, she was, she just had her calf and that's how she was bred the first time was through AI with the hormones. Cause the lady we got her from, she's like, when she goes into heat, she has some signs, but not really. She's like, there's no mucus. There's no, she's like, so we just did the hormone stuff. And she goes, it took the first time. So hopefully this lady's just an AI tech. That's what she does. So hopefully it works out. That'd be cool. Did... The hard part is nobody in our area does it anymore, the AI stuff, because there's quite a few dairy farms, or there was. all the There's like one or two dairy farms that own all of the other dairy farms now. So they do mm -hmm. all the AIing themselves. So the, the semen companies don't have any AI techs in the area. So even though where we got her from is only like an hour from here, and they had an AI tech in that area that would do it. They won't come up our way. So. That's so frustrating. Yep. So we should be having some more chickens here in a couple of days. Oh, really? Meat birds? I'm excited. I'm excited because, I mean, well, yeah, I have to be. <laughs> because <laughs> that's when it's, that's, you know, that's the start of our, our year right here. Yep. You know, that's why I'm trying to finish the fencing because that's that's when I get the phone calls. 
<laughs> you know, right, right about now. Right about now. So Chicken's what's coming? Come. Yeah, it's coming. No, but what's coming for chicks? Oh, 60 meat chickens and okay. 25 egg layers. Ooh. So, yep, from McMurray Hatchery. Did you ever think you're going to be telling your wife, hey, honey, I'm going to the post office to pick up a bunch of chicks and she'd be all right with it? <laughs> when you lived in California? Oh, I know. It was so foreign, right? When you when you found out that they ship mm -hmm. chickens in the post office, you're like, what? How does that work? Right. I was, yeah, we had no idea. When we lived in the suburbs down in Mass, we ordered some. And I was at work. I don't know how they tracked me down. I was in the next town over, and the post office, like, drove over to me. They're like, we got these chicks, like, at the wow. post office. We don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they tracked me down. I'm like, I think they called me first or something. But, they, yeah, they ended up bringing them to me, like, the next town over. They're like, these things are noisy. We don't want them here anymore. <laughs> That's funny. Your chicks. Yeah. yeah. They were like, must have never had it happen to them before. Like, hey, it's legal. You can do it. Yeah, I bet you, I bet you it's pretty common now. I bet, I, I bet you a while back, though, yeah, it probably was pretty foreign to everybody. This, this would have been eight, nine years ago back in Massachusetts. Okay. So we weren't supposed to have chickens, but we had them in the backyard. Oh, nice. Illegal chickens. Illegal chickens, yeah. <laughs> that's where we raised meat rabbits because Gina was like, you can't have chicken tractors in the backyard with your <laughs> chickens on pasture. So we did the meat rabbits. Those are a little bit more inconspicuous when you live in the in the suburbs. Yeah. So when are the turkeys coming? Or are you not doing turkeys this year? We're doing turkeys. They're coming. Uh, I think they're coming in a month or two. The next batch. Okay. Twenty of them. Twenty of them. I think we're like two months away before we'll get our first batch of meat birds. Yeah, it's probably around when we get our turkeys, I think. Yep. Hopefully they, they'll they'll all live. I don't have a good track record with turkeys. <laughs> Makes two of us. <laughs> That's why I got 20. You usually get like the minimum. You going to raise them with your chicks at all? You going to try that this year? Um, I mean, they're in the brooder with them, but when I put them out, no. When do you have the issue with them dying on you? Is it when you're raising them in the brooder or is it after you got them out on pasture? Um, it's, I guess they're, it's probably in the brooder. In yeah. The brooder. So I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's, I mean, again, well, I don't, I put like one chicken, you know, they say put a chicken in with them to teach them how to eat yep. and drink. Um, that's what I usually do. They're not all in there with them, but I'll put like one or two in there. Gotcha. But just, it's not, doesn't, I don't lose all of them all at once. It's just like kind of gradual, like two here, one there as the weeks go on. And then by the time they get to grass, it's like half of them are gone. I don't know. But, I think I might try. Uh, I've read "Give Them Liver." Really? In the when they're in the brooder. Okay. Like I guess <laughs> chop it up pretty good. Catfish Maybe. like liver too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or, but you got to leave. I think it it's out a high protein. It's stinky. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's probably the high protein. Maybe maybe when I give them enough protein, I don't know. Speaking of like Murray Hatchery, when do you go out there for your speaking arrangement? When are they doing that? Is that in the summer? That's the that's the end of June. End of June, okay. Wait, it's gonna I come still quick. don't know. Yeah. No, I know. I still don't know if we're gonna fly or drive, but I probably should. That reminds me, I probably should figure that out because if I'm gonna fly, I should buy the tickets now. <laughs> What's your talk about? Um, building chicken tractors. Building chicken tractors. Speaking of that, have you seen the new chick lift wheels, like the front ones? Uh, is the ones at the corners that turn? Yep. Yeah. I have two of those that you I have do. not, but I haven't even put them on. I've had them for like a year. Okay. I haven't found a good, I guess I could just put them on one of the chicken tractors that I have, but I haven't, I haven't tried. I just saw them today for the first time on Instagram. So I don't know if it was a new thing or not, because I haven't seen them anywhere other than that. So like, I'm going to affiliate with them. Yep. And he reached out to me, he wanted me to go out there and uh, film kind of like, like how they build them and stuff like that. Yep. See if I would film He's in Texas. I, was saying, I think they are in Texas, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I don't know, man. It's hard for me to get away, you know? Right. I was like, man, because he's like, it's probably a good two days drive. So it's two days driving there and two days driving home. And then what? I'm going to be there a day. You know, that's like five days. That's a week. Right. Yeah. yeah. At least, yeah. Five, six, seven days. I mean. We That's all need time. to get our. We need to get, all get our like helicopters license, and then we can just like take helicopters. <laughs> That's hey, like a childhood so... dream. Like I want to like just be able to. 
I don't know, teleport somewhere or drive a helicopter (laughs) somewhere and like get there pretty quick. That's all about the bush planes. Right. (laughs) Some super fast bullet train or something like. No, I want to be able to drive it myself. Like I don't like traffic. (laughs) I like to be in control. Like I want to know what's going on. I don't want to be stuck in traffic or have somebody else flying me or driving me. (laughs) Yeah. It's just such a long ways. So last, I think it was last summer. There's a, um, a bush plane YouTube channel that I watch every now and then, uh, uh, Jonas Marcinko and they flew out this way and it was probably a month after I saw a couple planes like bush planes come flying over. I remember looking at these bush planes flying over thinking, man, that really looks a lot like this Jonas guy's plane. Well, then a month later, he posts a video, and he did some great big cross-country flight. And he actually landed out here at one of the airstrips. There's there's people all over out here that have private airstrips. Well, they actually came out here, him and a friend, and flew right over our house. I thought it was crazy. I was like, man. Wow. Uh, that's always been something I've been interested in. I would, man, a different life. I'd totally be into bush planes and just, like, flying out in the middle of nowhere. Where is he coming from? Uh, Idaho. Oh, wow. I guess he was selling his plane to somebody out here, so he flew the plane all the way out here and then took a jet back to Idaho, but made a great big giant video about it. That's cool stuff. All the all that yeah. airplane videos. Like, you know, I've flown a drone plenty of times, but that's nothing <laughs> compared to being up in an airplane, being able to right. fly wherever you want. That sounds crazy, yeah. I like the helicopter just because you can you can land anywhere. Yeah, you can land on your property, Al. Yeah, we could we could take a bush <laughs> plane on our property. <laughs> we need to fly to you, right? <laughs> you never know. So, how long is the event out in Iowa? Is that where McMurray Hatchery is? It Iowa, or Idaho? They're Iowa, right? Iowa. Yeah. Iowa. Is it a two day um, event? I think it's it's two day, but the third day they're having some kind of hatch. It's like a hatch day. I think you could go to the hatchery. I don't know if... Check out the hatchery. I think you could check out the hatchery. I think of what it is yeah. on the third day. I don't know if we're going to stay for that. Gotcha. It's just a long... It's a long drive over there. Yeah, because you'll be gone for... Even if you just... Even if you fly out there, you'll probably be gone five days anyways. A day traveling yeah. each way, and then if you're there for Two three days. days. Yeah. Yeah, it's a long... It's a long haul. It's just not down the street. I mean, we drove there last time we were there, and man, it's such a long, flat drive. (laughs) It's just going. I mean, it's kind of pretty much straight up. You just go up, and it's pretty much easy to get there, but it's just there's nothing really. Like, when I drive, I I would love to go and stop and sightsee. Like, that would be cool, but I don't know if we could do that because we, you know, have animals. And see, the thing when you're when you're traveling like that, and we have to post videos. Right. That's what makes it hard. Yep. yep. Because you really can't do it at the same time. So that means it would be like, you know, a week of not posting any videos. Probably more than a week. Might be two weeks. Right. By the time I get to it. So I don't know. That's what makes it hard to leave like that. We've been invited out to Redmond's Salt's mine before. And it's like, yeah, I'd love to go, but it's hard to take the time off like you said filming and driving and then having somebody take care of the farm for you you know we I'd like to see energy. Redmond's mind yeah. and they have a they have a chef that does a lot of cooking and he does a lot of like recipes farms so I think they have a restaurant they have a grocery store I want to say they have a dairy farm like it is crazy everything that mm. Redmond's has out there wow but yeah that'd be neat it's impressive there's a lot of stuff in Utah so they're out in Utah Lion Energy, who we work with for our solar stuff, they're in Utah. Um, the Freeze Dryer Company, they're out in Utah, like right near, I think, Lion Energy. There's a, I don't know, it seems like every other company we look up for some reason is out in Utah in the same area. Was it Park City? I think is like the Freeze Dryer Company. What's one of like the grills? There's the, one of the grill companies, they're out that way. Yeah, I think about doing that, just leaving for the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> And just, just travel, travel, and just YouTube and travel. Right. How long did you and Meg do it for Ben? Was it six months, a year? Or... It was. It was ten months that we actually traveled. 
Uh, and then I don't know, like come the dead of winter time, it was just like we were we were done. We were tired of traveling. We'd seen everything we'd wanted to see. Uh, if we were to like do it over again, like ten months was cool, uh, but not having a place to come back to was that. I think that was the scary part because it's like, well, yes. I guess we like North Carolina, so that's where we're gonna go start looking for a place to live. Uh, yeah. To if we did it again, yeah, we'd definitely have like a home base set up. But I don't know if I'd want to be gone for ten months straight. Right. I know. Like that's a long time. Maybe six. Maybe that's- six. Maybe how about one month? <laughs> yeah, like I could do a month at a time. You know, maybe yeah. a month and a half, something like that. But I mean, you got to find someone to live on your in your house. Like somebody has to yeah. be there. You know, yep. you get back and squatters have come in and taken it over and burned it to the <laughs> ground. I mean, anything could happen. No, I know. Yeah. If I did it, I'd want to get a sprinter van. I think and drive mm. the sprinter van around. I would want to do it in. Uh, in another country yeah go somewhere overseas somewhere and just uh i don't know even for a month i think that'd be cool ireland would be cool for england seeing all their old pastures with the sheep and everything some old farm visit some old farms or something yep i don't know that'd be cool that'd be cool that'd be cool one day i think if we were to do it over again we would we'd build some sort of overland camper rig and not have a trailer we just have just you know kind of like the sprinter van but smaller something a lot more mobile so we could go a lot more remote that was that was really cool it's amazing how like once you get into that mode well i know al you know like you get into that like off-grid mentality and start thinking of ways to you know shrink your footprint and stuff like that man that was that was so much fun figuring out yeah, you really don't actually need a whole lot of power to still have creature comforts. What states did you miss, Ben? Uh, Kansas, Nebraska, Delaware, and then Alaska and Hawaii. Hawaii. Okay, so you went to yeah, you went to quite a few then. Uh, we went to everywhere that was, you know, something we wanted to see or was a possible place to move to. I knew we yeah. probably weren't going to move to Kansas or Nebraska. Uh, and then I don't know Delaware. The only reason we didn't see Delaware was just the day that we came through New England. We saw like five states, and it yep. was just like we would have to like backtrack to hit Delaware, and so we just didn't want to. And that was the only reason we missed it. But there's a lot of cool places to see in New England. Yeah, it's quite a bit of stuff. That's for sure, New England. A lot of history. Yeah, we need to go out that way. I haven't been out that way at all. So you guys, did you drive? You must have drove out at one point, Jason. Yeah, we just drove straight across. Straight, straight across, straight through, kind of. We didn't really sightsee much. How long did that trip take? We did it in nine days. Okay. And we kind of took our time, but... Not that much. Like we stayed in it. We, we went through Marfa, Texas. You know, we pretty much went through one one side of Texas to the other side of Texas. <laughs> um, stayed in the TP, which is pretty fun. Um... You know, when you stay at Airbnbs, we're like staying at just weird places. Yep. You know, like a teepee. You know, teepee. that was pretty cool. Uh, or we stayed in some guy's backyard in Austin. He had this like really nice tiny home. It was like it was like a super tiny backyard. It was like weird. It was like he didn't even really have a backyard, but he had like this tiny home back there <laughs> that was really nice, mm, which is pretty funny. cool. I got pulled over in Austin on our way over here, moving. Um, I really think the guy just wanted to stretch his police dog's legs. <laughs> or he probably saw my California license plate too, but yep. he was like, what do you guys, it was like early in the morning. And he's like, all right. He sniffed around and he was like, all right, you can go. Yeah. We all know why he's checking you. So it's hothead <laughs> Californians. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in Austin of all places, Austin's yeah, like the California town in right Texas. I mean, this was 2016, so oh uh, yeah, the Great still, Exodus still early. hadn't really started yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we we're too early for that. <laughs> he wanted to make sure you were going through. He didn't want the Californians coming in that early. <laughs> yeah, he saw it coming. He saw it coming. Yeah. He was like, "Oh man, 
he best be moving on. He ain't staying here. <laughs> you keep going in North Carolina. <laughs> All right, guys. Anything else? Anything else going on? Not really. Same old, same That's old. That's it. Spring will be All here right. soon. Yep. Spring is about here. For you, Al, soon. For over yeah. here, it's about here. All right. You guys should have it. We'll, we're probably like another month away. <laughs> yeah. Well, you never know. I hope we don't get that. We're going to get some random, crazy cold probably and kill all the peach trees. I'm yep. waiting for like but... a two foot heavy wet snowstorm. Oh, That's man. what we're going to get, I bet you. Snow is melted. You're going to get excited for spring. And then we're just going to get dumped. Oh. No. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I think that's it. Uh, I appreciate everyone listening and watching the podcast, and uh, I appreciate everyone. And I hope everyone has an awesome week, and we'll see you guys next week. Have a good week, guys. Catch you later.